Hello everyone, this is Captain Semantics, tutorial maker of Mega 12, and totally not the alternate ego of Jeremy Daniels, Commander of the Fleet. All joking aside, welcome everyone. I'm going to be going over the uh, some of the basics for starting an account in World of Warships, and also to reevaluate the reevaluate the tutorial that Wargaming has in place for this, and possibly make suggestions as well as helping people to get through some things that are not quite so clearly explained. Now, one thing that you need to do when you first start off is to decide which of the ship lines you're going to go up. Because as a brand new captain, you don't have very many extra port slots. And you need a port slot to get each new ship. So, we have the Japanese line. We have the US line. Russian. German. British and French. If you're going to drive a battleship, that's going to limit you to the US, Japanese, German, and British. Destroyers is going to be everybody except the Brits and the French. Carriers are currently only under the Japanese and the US. Everybody has cruisers though. So, you know, first thing is kind of decide which ship you are probably going to want to or which ship type you're going to want to go after. Second thing is going to be then deciding which specific ships of that ship type. If you're going to want to be driving the Iowa at any point. Erie. Start with the Erie. Straight up. Now. Let's go ahead and uh, look over the account level, which you get to by clicking on your name up here and selecting go to service record. As you can see, there are 15 levels for that you can attain at present, with space for them to add on more going down the line. I think when I started it was 11, and they've added four more sections because of new features they've added in. So we have level 1, you can't buy any new ships, you can't do any upgrades to them, it's just all you can do is hit the battle, go into a co-op battle. Which, fair enough. At tier 2, or account level 2, that's going to get you to where you can go and uh, actually see the tech tree for your ships and your modules. And you're doing the first battle on the ship that you end up not wanting to continue on down the line of isn't that big of a deal. One, you're probably going to want to come back and continue down the line later once you actually have more ships or once you have more port slots. Or it, you're really not losing a whole lot, all things told. At tier 3 is when you get access to the random battles. In co op, all you're doing is you're going up against a bunch of bot ships with other. Uh, other people, and it's an 8v8 with a perfectly with a mirrored ship selection. So if somebody brings in, so if we have two Aries, an Orlin, and a Black Swan, the bots are going to come in two Aries, an Orlan, and a Black Swan. And we'll keep on going over the rest as we unlock them. So, without further ado, since all we can do is, uh, actually, we're going to go ahead, click over here, and do the introductory mission. Because it should be, it's pretty advisable that you're going to want to do the introductory mission if this is your first time ever loading up World of Warships. For me, I can just skip and go straight into the co-op battles because I already have my main account, unsurprisingly named Jeremy Daniels. I already have tier 7 ships, I'm already at a level 15 account. We already have good work done on the clan, so we can continue on from there. Let's go ahead and take a look at this introductory mission. It's giving us a choice between 
the Japanese ship, the Hashidate, and the U.S., the Erie. And now we just have to wait for it to load in. It's going to take us through the basics of maneuvering, gunnery, and all that. Alright. So, one thing is, what I'm about to show you here is a way that you can pull up the cursor. If you hold down control, you'll actually bring up your cursor that you can move around to look at stuff. If you press shift, as a basic, uh, basic control, you will go to fully zoomed in and fully zoomed out. You use W, it says there W to start moving forward, and this here is your throttle listing. And your throttle goes from stop, one quarter, one half, three quarters of full, and then full reverse. W to increase, S to decrease. Now the tier one ships, except for the Black Swan, only have access to HE. Black Swan only has access to AP, but that's because the British light cruisers, the entire British, uh, the Royal Navy cruiser line only has armor piercing. This here is your damage control party. This does not heal your ship. What it does is if you get set on fire, you start flooding, or if one of your weapons or your engine or your rudder get knocked out, you hit the damage control to repair that. It has a cooldown that differs based on ship to ship. The basic is that it has a cooldown of anywhere from 40 to 40 to 90 seconds. And go ahead and shoot this destroyer. Get this uh going. Alright, what, what it's saying now is if you hold down the right mouse button, you go into free look mode. Now you do have to deal with leading your targets based on how far away they are. And I will show you the settings I have that actually give give me the time to imp or time to shell impact, distance to target, has the HP bar, the name of the ships, and all this fun stuff. The other thing you're going to want to do when you first start is you're going to have to have set that I had set by default. is you're going to want to have it where you have the, uh, you press the plus button on your keypad to make or to get the uh, minimap here big enough to where it's not covering too much of the screen, but you can still easily see what's on it. Also, click on the little gear icon at the top right while holding down control. You definitely want to have detectability range by C on. Main battery firing range is on by default. But turn on the last known, last known position markers, range numerical values, and ship names. It makes a huge difference for being able to know what's happening. As you see, as I'm looking around, I have these, yellow, these little yellow circles that are turning to follow my aiming reticle. That is letting you know what the actual position of your guns are. It's green, it can fire. It's yellow, they can't. And I just got to set on fire here. And if you see the that they are kind of grayed out, what that means is you cannot even though if your guns can even if your guns can point in that direction, they cannot fire. Promotion. Point that direction in the first place, but neither here nor there. And 
I got a Citadel on the ship with my high explosive. And I'll explain that once we get back out to port to uh, what the Citadel is, what it means, and what all these different numbers are. Well, I'm still trying to keep this at a relatively short period, all things told. As you can see, I'm supposed to be capturing Area B, but even though I'm in Area B, I'm not capturing it because there's another ship in the area. We have this nice little progress bar down here, so when you see that you have uh, entered the capture zone and the capture is pro progressing and then stops, that means is one of the enemy ships, one of the red ships, just got in and is uh, trying to capture it themselves. Or blocking your capture, I should say. And there are a lot of more minutia here that can be gone over, but I'm trying to just stick to the basics at the present moment. But the tier 1 stuff, they must have just set, this mission they just must have set the uh, enemy shells to not do any damage, which makes sense. And then they set my, my fire chance to 100%. Which makes sense for a tutorial, you're just wanting to get people where they're used to having the uh, missions here. Rather than uh, punishing them for not knowing what they're doing. And this does get you the basics of maneuvering, basics of uh, basics of what you need to do to drive your ship. Alright, now to explain what the Citadel is, let me pull up the armor viewer here. And this is going to show, you know, this is a very handy tool that you can use and can look at, use to look at any ship that is actually in the tech tree. Which is a little annoying when they have some premiums they can buy on the shop and on the tech tree, so you can't try to view it to see exactly how to best approach or attack those vessels. But... It is what it is. Now we have different buttons up here. This one down here is the armor of the vital parts. This is what is known as the Citadel. Along with the, uh, well, for the for larger ships, the if they have full-on turret barbettes, the uh, barbette themselves and the magazines will usually be part of the Citadel. Not always, but usually. So to see where the Citadel is easily, you hide the plating, which is usually at the fore and the aft end. Hide the superstructure, just for giggles. And hide any deck armor or auxiliary room armor. And this leaves us with just the turrets and the Citadel itself. As we cover over, we can see just how thick armor is. Now the trick to being able to 
get a citadel with HE is like these here or this part, these parts here. Those are completely inside of the ship. There's actually, as you can see, there's actually plating around them. The way HE works is when it hits, something it detonates immediately. So you can't hit the inner sit or this inner citadel here with HE because you have the not only do you have the plating in the way, and the deck and some deck plating in the way, but that's also right at or just below the water level. If your high X shells hit water, they explode as well. So you really are just having to hit right along this tiny little strip right here, just above the water. And all along the outside of the ship. If you hit there with your shells and it's able to defeat the armor, it will actually get you a citadel. Now the Black Swan, because it's a British cruiser, instead of having only high explosive at tier 1, it has only armor piercing. So at tier 1, that is a citadel machine. Though the angle of the or what angle your shots are coming in is important. But again, that's we can explain that a little bit later. Suffice to say that uh, knowing how to position your ship to be able to bring the most guns to bear on the enemy target while presenting the least threatening position for yourself is going to be critical. And it gets kind of uh, interesting at the higher tiers when you're having to, depending on whether you're looking at coming up against an enemy cruiser or a enemy battleship, looking into the overmatch mechanics, the high explosive penetration mechanics. It does get a little complicated, but we'll get there. Don't worry. Captain Semantics will help you uh, get all the minutia taken care of. So now that we've learned how to press W and S and how to aim with our guns, let's get ready to do a co-op battle after I show you a few of the settings. Uh, this is all graphic settings, so muck about with this if you're having low frame rate and it's hard for you to tell what's going on. Audio. Changing the audio around a little bit is going to be helpful if it seems too loud, too quiet, or if you want, don't want to have the music quite so loud, hit the sound effects, etc, etc. That being said, the War Drums music mode is all sorts of fun. You will kind of get a chance to uh, have that heard once I start the co-op battle. Uh, and you can't even list, add your own music to the game to listen to. But so, but these are all basically the uh, audio settings change the sound quality around a little bit. If you want to have a default to Russian voiceover language, and French, Portuguese, Chinese, German, Korean, English, United Kingdom. And yes, they have a pirate English mode. The voiceover modification. Several of these other voices here are based off of uh, previous events that they ran. Uh, if you don't know what Arpeggio of Blue Steel is, don't worry about it. They, they won't show up for you and you won't have to worry about them. I don't think. You might be able to select them, so they're just basic different uh, voiceovers that were recorded by... Uh... Actually, yeah, I guess that they will show up, because this is a new character account. Now, if you select National, the voiceover language will change based off of which ship that you're sailing. If you're sailing a Japanese ship, you'll get Japanese, Russian, Russian. They even have an Italian ship, premium only for the moment, though they are looking at introducing uh, an actual line of pasta boats. But the National will change your voiceover to whatever type of ship you're sailing, which is kind of cool, but it does make it a little harder for you to know what's going on at times. Alright, controls is where we want to uh, look at. A couple things. First off, make sure your terrain hit indicator is on. 
make sure your collision avoidance is off. Your alternative interface mode, I believe, will start off as either off or adaptive. Switch that to full. That's going to have it where it will have the ship name, it'll have the ship HP bar, it'll have the player name. Instead, if you don't have it turned off, all you see is the little ship type icon. A triangle for destroyers, a larger uh, triangle with a stripe through it for cruisers, two stripes for battleships, and then a triangle with two rectangles for carriers. Display uh, some of these are, are just going to be your own uh, prerogative, but detailed ribbons, you want this on. I personally like having being able to see both the main battery and the torpedo tube loading indicators at the same time, especially for destroyers, so that you can't you know, you don't have to keep sw swapping back to your torpedo tube to see how long it is till they uh, come up. The smoke screen boundaries and the smoke screen timer should be on by default, but if they're not, turn them on. That's very handy. Destroyers and some and the Royal Navy cruisers can lay smoke screens. With these on, you will, one, see exactly where it is that your ship will be concealed in that smoke, which makes it so that you can't be spotted outside of two kilometers unless you fire. There are going to be some changes coming from or with that in the near future, but that's and that's basically what's going to be. If you are with it, if you don't fire, it gets your spotting distance reduced dramatically unless you fire your main battery, which will increase it out to two and a half kilometers for destroyers, anywhere from seven or from like five to ten kilometers for cruisers, five for the light cruisers, ten and up for the heavy cruisers. And 13 kilometers for battleships thereabouts. But the other thing is the smokescreen timer. This makes it so that when you lay a smokescreen, you will get a timer for how long your smokescreen will last. It also makes it so that whenever you sail into a smokescreen, you'll get a little timer pop up to tell you how long that particular cloud of smoke that you're in will last. Because there are a few things that are more sad than desperately sailing into a smokescreen laid by a destroyer to try to hide for a little bit as a battleship to heal up and you get into the smokescreen and it disappears in a second and you've already stopped which makes you an easy target the other thing is you're going to come here and go to select crosshair you have two crosshair options static and dynamic static you have a couple different types you can or Lord, a bunch of different types you can swap between. The thing is, you have the uh, this crosshair does not change whether you're fully zoomed in or only partially zoomed in. You actually have three or four different levels of zoom when you go into your binocular aiming mode. So that that means that you have to know what your uh, how far ahead to aim on something, depending on how far away or how long your shell time is based off of this fully zoomed in at one click out, two clicks out, three clicks out. With dynamic, as you zoom in and you zoom out, the crosshair will actually, or the scale of the crosshair will actually change so that it's still the same base, or it's the, still the same scale as if you're fully zoomed in, but you're zooming out and having the crosshair zoom out, or the crosshair uh, aiming scale zoom out as well. I really suggest using dynamic. It makes it a lot easier, all things told. And the rule of thumb there is for a ship that is going 30 knots let me go ahead and get pulled back up here again. Should have just left it pulled up. Oops. With, it, with the dynamic crosshair if a ship is, if it'll take five seconds for your shells to reach, and you put the five marker right at the nose of the ship going 30 knots, that will just about put your shells landing amidships on them. Obviously, not all ships go exactly 30 knots, so you'll have to learn with different ships where to aim on them. And that's just going to come with time with practice. 
But that's the rule of thumb that I found that works pretty well. So if a ship's if there's a cruiser that I know that goes 30 knots and it looks like they're steaming at full speed I, and they are 10 seconds away, I'll put their note. I'll put the tin hash right on their nose. If it's a battleship, they know that only does 21 or 23 knots. I'll actually track it forward to where I'm putting the uh, hash mark halfway to two thirds of the way back on their ship, especially depending on whether they're maneuvering. Now this is with them going completely 90 degrees to your uh, it re relative to how your guns are pointed towards them. That is going fully broadside. If they're angling out a little bit, you'll need to aim up just a hair, angling in a little bit, aim down just a hair, and that's going to be the part where you're really going to have to just... There's no real easy way to uh, deal with that outside of just experience. And it's going to take some time for you to get used to it. It's not because you're a bad player. It's not because you don't know what's going on. Some people pick it up faster than others. Just keep plugging away at it and you'll learn. And so let's go ahead and get a first battle here out of the way. Now, this is the battle queue. It tells you how many people of different classes are queuing up. You will not wait more than 30 seconds in a co-op match, because at, as soon as the first person hits 30 seconds, it fills out the rest of the team with bots. And at Tier 1, you can only see other Tier 1s. Alright, so we have two, three bots on our team. You can tell that because they have a colon before and after their name. I think that the colon is actually a restricted character for uh, account names anyway, so you can't see somebody trying to make it look like they are a bot. Now the bots only show up in co-op. When you start random battles, it, uh, uh, it will just keep on going until I think it's uh, two and a half minutes. Two and a half or five minutes, one of those. And once that time reaches, it'll just put together the best match that it can. Which means that if you're in a low popul or if there's a if you're in a low uh, low traffic time like we are now, what you really need to do, especially if you're in a ship that not a lot of people are playing at the moment, like carriers, when you're getting up close to that. Uh, time frame, you know, to the maximum time frame, back out, go back in. I know it's annoying, but it's a lot better than getting thrown into a match where you only have four ships each side, or six ships each side, or the worst I've seen is two ships each side. Although the two ships each side usually comes about with uh, high tier carriers, so. But it's just considered good, uh, good manners and cur courteous to do that. Enemy force sighted on the horizon. Now, one thing to realize about the bots: while in some ways they are actually, they do actually end up playing a little bit better than players. They also are full-on programmed with Leroy Jenkins in mind. What I mean is, if you don't know about Leroy Jenkins. I'm, that'll just make me feel old. But they they just attack, attack, attack. Now, I, the only ship I have in range right now is this Hermelin. I could try to shoot at him now, even though he's behind the island, because your shells do follow ballistic arc. But you see this little mountain icon? It means that if I try to shoot right now, my shells are not going to clear that mountain. Usually. It, it isn't perfect. And there are times where it will tell you that you're not going to hit the, the mountain, and you still will, and there'll be times where it'll tell you that you are going to hit it, but you know, but you'll actually clear it. Instead, I'm going to get into a uh, gunfight with this Eerie down here, the Jellico, or Captain by Jellico.
Alright, so I set him on fire. Fire is a damage over time effect. But, the thing about fire is, how much damage it does isn't a flat amount. The damage that fire does over time is based purely off of the hit point values of the ship that is set on fire. It's a percentage. Uh, I think something like 0.4% or 0.5% uh, of the ship's hit point per second that they're on fire. So, it doesn't matter if you're a destroyer, battleship, carrier, cruiser, if you're on fire, you're burning for the same, same relative amount, period. Ah, well, I just got there, it wasn't an incapacitation. That means my shell actually knocked out a module on the ship. God, it's it all hilarious. And it'll actually give you a little pop-up letting you know what it is that you incapacitated. See what looks like a propeller, it means you knocked out their engine. If you see what looks like a uh, steering wheel, you knocked out their rudder. What I knocked out there, or really disabled, was one of their batteries. Gun. You can actually knock out enemy weapons in. Uh, If you incapacitate them and then immediately, before they are repaired, hit the gun again and do enough damage to it to uh, destroy it. And it can be very annoying to have half, third, three quarters, or in some cases I've seen with people, all of their batteries knocked out at once. All your batteries are knocked out. What you have left is a uh, very large man guided torpedo. Which isn't strictly accurate. You do have uh... Oh, and Oh, I actually got a sneaky hit on him. That's hilarious. As you can see, with that uh, black swan, since he was shooting AP at me, I was able to keep a good angle in, and he did minimal damage to me, as I was able to just wreck him pretty thoroughly. Now, our Bougainville over there, uh, Toru Kun, oh, and somebody else took out the Eerie. We had somebody else trying to cap the enemy base. And that is one way to win about the enemy base. Alright, uh, let me actually get that pulled back up and I'll explain the different screens there at the end. Yay, I hit a new level, which got me to the tech trees for ships and modules, which will actually allow for me to upgrade my ship. Modules, I can look at my tech tree and look at my profile now. But first, Oh, hey! Because I got an invite code, which hopefully if you're watching this you will have gotten an invite code from somebody else, I now have a Tier 2 premium ship, Russian cruiser, the Diana. Very pretty little ship. Even has the old uh, Royal, or the Tsarist Navy flag there. I forget the exact name of it. I'm sure somebody will tell me. Alright. So personal score. This tells you your total, your gross credits received. It'll tell you your gross XP received. And once you get up to a high enough account level, I think it's a level five or thereabouts, you'll also see how much free XP you have received. I'll explain about that when we get there. And it tells you what your battle performance is, how much damage you cause, and it lays out your different ribbons. One thing you want to do, especially if you have a low damage, but a lot of target hits, we'll hover over this to see what type of hits you get, got. As you can see, I got all my target hits actually were penetrations. 
there are four different, well, there are five different possibilities whenever you hit an enemy ship with your shells. One, they penetrate and do damage. Two, they over penetrate and do damage. Three, they don't penetrate and they just shatter, which does no damage. And then four, which is to uh, ricochet. HE shells cannot ricochet because as soon as they hit, they explode. So they're contact fused. Not how they actually worked in real life, but that's how they worked in warships. Incapacitations, like I said, uh, just anytime you incapacitate a ship module. Main batteries, secondary batteries, torpedo tubes, engines, or uh, rudder steering. This is. You have these ribbons here for whenever you actually sink an enemy ship. And that doesn't matter if you do 95% of the damage to it or 5%. So long as you were the one that caused the last hit point of damage that actually depleted their HP pool. You get a destroyed ribbon. And this ribbon here is whenever you actually set a fire. Only high explosive shells can set fires. You also have ribbons for torpedo hits and for floodings. The only thing that can cause floodings are torpedo hits or ramming. Uh, you click on team score and it'll actually give you the breakdown of, ev of what everyone's uh, experience on the team was. So you can see where you placed on the team. Especially delightful when you are in a match and you have somebody running his mouth saying that you're a bad player match gets over, you go to the team score and you see that you scored twice what he did, three times what he did, four times what he did. Or you're at the top of the team, he's down here at the bottom. Juicy. Juicy. Doesn't always happen, quite frankly, even if there's someone who is a total jerk in the match. Even if they get top of the team, I still wouldn't want to play with them again, just because they were jerks. Detailed report will actually give you a breakdown of how much of not just how much damage you cause, but what damage you cause with different uh, things. This is your main battery. It'll also tell you, you know, your number of hits versus shells fired, how much damage you did with fires. When you have armor piercing, it'll tell you how much damage you did with high explosive and how much damage you did with armor piercing. And it'll also show you the different ships that you hit, like the Erie that got the one hit on. My shell didn't actually do any damage, even though it penetrated. Go figure. And it'll also tell you how much damage you received, as well as giving you the breakdown from that. And if you hover over artillery here, it'll tell you which ships did what damage. Uh, potential damage. That is, it says there, total damage of total damage potential of ammunition fired at your ship by the enemy. Now this is any shell or any torpedo that comes within, uh, I think, 100 or 150 meters of your vessel. So, technically speaking, if you have two vessels close together and a torpedo goes right between the two of them, they are both going to get that same potential damage from that torpedo. Distance travel is just kind of a little funny thing. So, but, you know, this is basic statistics. And then the credits and XP tab will go over how much you received, how much you spent on service cost, which is zero service cost for your uh, the tier ones. It'll also go over your XP received, any modifiers that you got, and give you your total and all that. Now this is without premium, because I'm not running a premium account. This is with premium. If I was running a premium account, this is what I would get. This is how Wargaming pays the bills, for one of the ways. And I'm going to go ahead and call it here, and next episode I will go over the modules, the tech tree, and how to actually upgrade your ship and start getting on to the next vessels. So no, until next time, this is Captain Jeremy Daniels saying, keep it safe out there people.